Humor and management. Uh, uh, my master's thesis is called Humor and Management, and I'm going to just brief you what I've been doing for the last two years. Uh, in 15 minutes, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about humor and management. Why humor and management? Humorous leaders, are they better leaders? Do you have to be funny to lead with humor? Is it all about telling jokes? These are some questions that we should think about. OK, it's a very delicate subject. Humor is. People are very sensitive about their sense of humor. Uh, I mean, to be or not to be funny, people I know, they will confess to you know, treason, murder, arson, even having false teeth or a wick. <laughs> but how many will own up to a lack of humor? <laughs> no one I know. I mean, just to tell the truth, humor is sexy. You know, well, when men use humor, it's sexy. <laughs> Humorous women are scary. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, I know I'm a comedian, and my love life is so <laughs> zero. <laughs> so. But let's just, let, let's look at the word. It's, it's um, very interesting that it derives from Latin, umere, which means moist. And in the Middle Ages, it was believed that four flutes in the body, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, these were very important flutes, and the imbalance would really mean that a person was physically or mentally unwell. And it was called humor, these four flutes. So uh, if you look it up in a dictionary, then you uh, will find something like that. Funny, witty, amusing, has the capacity to make people laugh. And uh, if you categorize it, you have slapstick humor, misunderstanding humor, innuendo humor, wordplay, parody, irony, sarcasm, all sorts of things. Uh, and this I found very interesting. Aristotle said uh, the roots of laughter are some kind of sharpiness and deformity and degrading to morals, art, and religion, a form of behavior from which civilized men should shrink. <laughs> Could be an Icelandic theatre critic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, development of humor. Uh, uh, this is, is uh, you, uh, I know you recognize it from, from bringing up your children. Uh, uh, from birth to two years, um, a, a child laughs at tickling and body contact. Uh, two to seven years, uh, a child laughs at physical function, clowning, slapstick, nonsense expressions, and even chanting. And seven to nine years, a child laughs at practical jokes and insults. They start uh, understanding. Nine to 11, uh, then a child laughs at conventional jokes, riddles, wordplay. And after 11, a child laughs at original humor, good-natured humor, tongue-in-cheek humor, and even social satire. Uh, to be humorous or not to be humorous? That is the question. Uh, through training a lot of people in society, uh, I was so surprised, really, how many people think that the uh, more authority you have or the higher education, the less humor you are allowed to use, because it makes you less respectable. And when I train speakers and they're really well-educated or, or have a really important position uh, in uh, Iceland, I, I train Icelanders, and, and then I usually get 
something like this. People come to me and they bring something they are going to talk about. And I say, and I was wondering, I should maybe talk about, you know, when we opened this uh, uh, new store and, and, and everybody was very happy and it was going well. And uh, is that okay? Uh, yeah, sure, use anything you have. And then they start the presentation. Good evening. It's nice to have you here all. And we are all thoroughly happy <laughs> being able to open this store. <laughs> Monotone ventriloquist, you know. I'm looking for the doll. Because, uh, and that's being respectable for you. you know, do you respect a person out of concrete? No. So, uh, well, loosen up. That's the only thing I can say. Be yourself, be the best part of yourself. Uh, now there's the big question, why should managers use humor? When I started uh, preparing uh, my thesis, I, I looked everywhere for researches on the matter. And it was very difficult, really. F for a few months, I found nothing, nothing, nothing of substance. But then, Gradually, I got more and more researches, more and more evidence that humor in the workplace really does build relationships, create more positive working environment, reduces stress, motivates employees, and enhances creativity. And Managers who use humor make the employees feel better and express themselves better and produce better results. Good for the company. Even more interesting, humor boosts self-confidence of executives and has been correlated with financial bonuses. More humor, more money. <laughs> okay, very simple. Uh, okay, humor, courage, sincerity. To me, humor is, is really about being courageous, or being, being sincere, because you're really showing people into your soul. You're giving them a piece of your heart when you use your humor. And you take a big chance, because using humor, either people hate you or they love you. It's not like, yeah, he was humorous. No. <laughs> He was funny or not funny. <laughs> so it's about really courage. Uh, laughter may not change reality, but it can certainly help people survive it. There's a very interesting man, Steve Lippmann. He, uh, his research was, uh, was about humor in Holocaust, the use of humor. And, uh, uh, the inmates in Auschwitz, they used to uh, make cabarets just to be able to laugh together, so not to go insane. And he said, humor is one of the greatest gifts God gave mankind to pull itself out of despair. And he wrote a book called Laughter in Hell, which I suggest you read sometime. Uh, Humor makes unavoidable circumstances tolerable. Uh, when um, I've been training a lot of uh, flight attendants, and they, they sometimes get these really horrible people, and, and you know, you're stuck with them. And you have to be polite to them, no matter what. So what you do um, is you really, uh, you get help, you, you, you get healed. You, there's nothing you can do about the person being rude to you or, 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 or uh, annoying. The only thing you can do is, and they do it, you, you, you talk to the uh, head flight attendant and you say, excuse me, can I poison the man in 26A? <laughs> and and the, uh, the head flight attendant says, certainly, or throw him out of the plane. <laughs> or just what we do usually, spit in his coffee. <laughs> And it's easier, really, to deal with a person after you, you had a good laugh. Because you can see the person, you know, when you walk past him eating poison or whatever. <laughs> now, business meetings, boring 
or bearable. Uh, a, a friend of mine, a uh, uh, manager in a big company, he said he dreaded meetings, the morning meetings. He said they were so horrible, and, and you know, business meetings like funerals. The funerals end, you know, and people people start healing, but business meetings they are just sad all, all, uh, always. And he said he started uh, just. Uh, uh, Changing the first minutes of the day by letting everyone share stories, humorous stories, laugh together. First 10 minutes, just have a laugh. And what I found very interesting was uh, because I, I interviewed a lot of people and uh, uh, a lot of Icelandic managers do this really, they think about it seriously. How can I, there's going to be a difficult meeting, uh, how can I make it a little bit easier on people? And hey, let's start by joking, let's start by talking about something very light, and then let's go on. And then it's easier to solve all the problems they find. Uh, excellent tool for speakers. Speakers ask me sometimes, uh, uh, isn't it, uh, it's good to start by saying something funny when you start a speech. And I say, yes, but it has to be funny. <laughs> I mean, if you try to be funny, it's not funny, you're dead. <laughs> so use the, the stand-up technique, which is the best technique. That is, make fun of yourself. Tell stories about yourself. And then you're not telling a joke because people don't have to laugh. You're only telling people very sincerely about some experience. And either they laugh or not, but you're connecting with them. And uh, also, you can, you can gain control if you lose control. Sometimes speakers lose control. And it's not even their fault, like a friend of mine who was giving this very, very serious and, and intelligent speech. And he, uh, when he, he, uh, he had his computer on his table, and when he was uh, trying to start the presentation, nothing worked, nothing. So he took the notes, and th what happened with the notes was he, he tripped on the stage, and the <laughs> notes fell all over, and he started collecting the notes, and then the microphone fell on the, on the <laughs> stage, you know, with a boom. And so he took up the microphone and was going to say something to save the situation. And then there was this screeching and the microphone. And, and then he uh, did this brilliant thing. He just took it away and said, OK, how do you like it so far? <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So, and, and, and there was a... Uh, there was this uh, woman, this motivational speaker in one of the many seminars I go to to become a better person or a healthier person or something, and she had broken her arms, so she had a plaster, a cast. And, and she said, oh, I want to start by explaining this cast on my hand. Uh, those of you who have just bought the book Sex for Middle Aged Women, <laughs> There is a misprint on page 205. <laughs> Beautiful. If you're in doubt that humor works, try it. Believe me, try it. Uh, if you think you're humor challenged, then I tell you humor is a result of nurturing, not nature. So, Exercise. Try to become a more humorous person. I would give you the exercises now, but uh, now they're all looking at me very grimly because my time is out. So go to my website at thebjørgvins.is and there are some exercises that you should do daily, every day, to a humorous exercise. When you leave this room, exercise number one, try to recall some incident that made you laugh uncontrollably and share it with someone. Very good exercise. And then, at last, I want to uh, quote Inspector Clouseau, who said, there is time to laugh and there is time not to laugh. And this is not one of them. <laughs> Thank you very much.